Hello, this is Tim Rogers from Kotaku.com. Welcome to the second part of my comparison of the Japanese and English scripts of Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII came out 20 years ago. I once lived in Japan for 10 years. I'm playing Final Fantasy VII in both English and Japanese at the same time, and spotting little differences. Most of these differences happen because English takes way too many letters to explain a thing that Japanese can explain in far fewer letters. For example, washing machine is 15 letters in English and just three in Japanese. Last time, we realized that Cloud Strife, an ice-cold mercenary in English, has more of a sense of humor in Japanese. This time, our heroes are going to blow up a power reactor and ride a train. Warning, some of the Japanese you learn during the course of this video might never be useful to you. So here we have Cloud and Barrett, two of our main characters, entering the Mako reactor. Mako is the planet's energy that the evil company Shinra uses to power their city of Midgar. Barrett and Cloud are gonna blow it up because they're hardcore terrorists. So Barrett asks Cloud, yo, this your first time in a reactor? In Japanese, this line is a tiny bit different. Barrett says, uh, Oi, omae makoro wa hajimete janaindaro. Okay, first of all, his salutation is oi, which is actually a fairly normal, non-slangy salutation attention getter. Final Fantasy VII's translators translated it as yo, which is fine. Uh, though definite non, you know, yo type people might also use this salutation. Like you might hear a grandma say it. Oi, nisan which could mean like, hey there, Sonny. We could also translate oi as like, hey, or so. Anyway, Barrett is uh, clearly saying here, so this isn't your first time in a reactor. This is just a tiny difference. Uh, in, in English, Barrett definitely is asking Cloud if this is his first time in a reactor. In Japanese, Barrett is small talking. So here we are in a reactor, which is the sort of place you've definitely been before, yeah. So then we're in this elevator in the uh, in the Mako reactor and Barrett delivers this stirring monologue. He beseeches Cloud's empathy. The planet is dying and Avalanche is going to stop it with punctual acts of terrorism. And at this point, Cloud famously replies in English, it's not my problem. So it's worth pointing out that in Japanese he uses is a, a phrase he's used before, kill me night, which we discussed last time, which means I'm not interested, I have no interest. Uh, so it's, it's interesting to know that he uses this same phrase over and over again. This is his catchphrase in Japanese. He is as uninterested in the fate of the planet as he is in the names of his temporary co-workers. The Japanese also has a phrase right before it, which is warui kedo. He says warui kedo, kyo mi night. Warui kedo is just the word bad, warui, with the word though. Kedo stuck to it. Bad though. So he's saying, bad though, I'm not interested. Sorry, I'm not interested. Sorry, I don't care. Sorry, it's not my problem. Um, I, I have a friend who uses that word as its own sentence. It's, it's like her trademark word. We could be eating in a restaurant. The waiter would leave the check face down on the table and I'd look at it and look at her and she'd look at it and look at me and she'd just fold her arms and say, Warui Kedo. So she's hilarious. Uh, she's also deathly afraid of birds, like any bird at all. So here, Cloud and Barrett are placing a bomb. The reactor's gonna blow up in 10 minutes because of the bomb. And uh, in English, Cloud says, come on, let's get out of here. With this exclamation point, which is, that exclamation point is why I made his voice sound like that just now. It's, it's cracked his trademark cool facade in Japanese. He sounds cool still. He says, sa da shutsuda. Uh, so he sounds actually cooler in Japanese now than he does in English. Sa just means well or all right. Dashutsu means escape. Da is the uh, informal, colloquial, short, plain form of the, the B verb. So he's saying, well, it's escape. Well, time to go. He's so cool in Japanese about his escape from a building on the verge of explosion that he doesn't even put any punctuation on the sentence. Like, look at that. I would go so far as to say that this is the particular type of extreme cool that would make well its own sentence with the period and all. So once we've successfully escaped and the team is assembled outside, it's Barrett's turn to talk about getting out of here. All right, now let's get out of here. In Japanese, he also uses sa. Sa, hiki agerizo. Hikiyageru is a, is a military sounding phrase. It, it literally means to pull something upward. So let's pull up. And zo is a sentence ender that implies a sort of a tough dude urgency. Hikiyageru zo is like saying, let's pull it up or let's move out. So the, the militariness of this phrase is such that we could even translate his sa as all right, followed by a semicolon. He's cool enough to say all right, yet he possesses a self-taught military discipline. All right, let's move out. So the team rendezvous in the back of a train car. 
Cloud is late showing up, so the group discusses whether Cloud is dead or not, of course. Biggs says, Cloud, wonder if he was killed. And Barrett replies, No way! With two exclamation points, hence the volume there. So in Japanese, Barrett's line is uh, actually dramatically different, and I was surprised by quite how different. Biggs asks, Cloud, yarare chimatta no kana? And uh, Barrett replies with, Biggs uses, first of all, he uses the phrase which is translated as killed, but it's pretty slangy. This would be the perfect opportunity to inject slang into the writing. If we were feeling fancy, uh, I wonder if those jerks done did cloud in. I don't know, that's more like a early 2000s Square Enix translation. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, so Barrett's line is so note the two exclamation points there. This is a fantastic line that shows us a lot about Barrett's character. For one thing, he's using slangy verb endings. Uh, more formally, you would say, but he says, tougher and cooler. And then he refers to Cloud as, which means that guy or that jerk, or maybe something a little meaner than that jerk. So he's saying like, there's no way that jerk would disappear without getting his money. And in English, this is just translated as, no way. In Japanese, we get a quick glimpse into Barrett's kind heart. We're going to learn later. He's a, he's a kind individual. He rejects the idea that Cloud is dead and instead answers the question as though he'd just been asked, do you think Cloud ditched us? He doesn't want to think Cloud is dead. That's, that's how cool and nice of a guy he is. So next, Biggs asks, Say, do you think Cloud's going to fight to the end? for Avalanche? And Barrett replies, the heck would I know? Do I look like a mind reader? Hmph, if y'all weren't such screw ups. So this actually has a whole extra line in Japanese that didn't make it into the text box. Sana, shirane yo. There's a whole extra sentence here that isn't in the English version. After saying, y'all weren't such screw-ups, Barrett here says, we wouldn't need to even hire a guy like that. This reference to the terrorist group's organizational structure prompts Biggs to think about money. Hey Barrett, what about our money? In Japanese, there's a minor, tiny little difference. Ah, Barretto-san. So instead of saying just the, the plain word for money, he uses the phrase our salary. Kyuryo means salary. So this is a minor difference, though. It opens up kind of a neat little consideration that uh, Barrett pays these guys regularly. That's a neat little thing to think about. And when Cloud finally shows up, Barrett scolds him. Having everyone worried like you don't give a darn about no one except yourself. First of all, I'm not sure what this word is supposed to be. Uh, someone's finger must have slipped on the keyboard a lot. In Japanese, Barrett's scolding goes back to the word yaro. Remember, yaro means guy or jerk or jack off or jag off. Or... So he's employing here uh, one of my favorite Japanese punk talk devices, uh, which is you put a word before yaro to describe what kind of yaro a yaro is. So, for example, long time ago, me and my roommate in Japan, we had a third roommate and we didn't like him, so we called him roommate o yaro. This implied that he was a yaro who was also our roommate. So in his scolding of Cloud here, Barrett calls Cloud a chikoku yaro. Chikoku means tardiness. So Barrett is calling Cloud a tardiness yaro. Uh, and I mean, there's a million clunky ways we could probably translate that into English. Uh, you jerk who's late. And I mean, that would just sound unnatural and weird unless, you know, you're, you're me. And I think that sounds kind of awesome. The English version represents this second line uh, quite faithfully. Shinpai sasiagatte katte no yaro da. Heck. You're a selfish jerk who makes people worry about you. So here the uh, the English translates yaro as jerk. However, we must not always presume that yaro must be translated as a word per se. So sometimes you translate yaro as a sensation by injecting some conveyance of disgust or exasperation or annoyance into a sentence. Our group of uh, friends here uh, moves into another train car where Barrett tells Cloud to Stop acting like a darn kid. Sit down and shut up. Uh, so in Japanese, he's a little bit more a uh, solid snake than Mr. T. He says, You're not a child. Be cool. So technically the word jitto means uh, still, unmoving. Suru is the verb for to do. Shiteru is the verb for doing. So if you end a verb with the ro, it makes it very imperative. So shiteru is how you order someone to be doing something. So append jito 
which is an adjective or an adverb, uh, depending on how you look at it. Japanese is quite flexible. So you append that to shitero, and you get a terse imperative command to assume a state of being unmoving. So it's pretty much be still, except slangier, be cool. Sit down and shut up, therefore, is a little bit too harsh. Uh, I feel like the English is trying to make Barrett sound like a hardcore bad butt than the Japanese does. So yeah, again, in Japanese, he's Solid Snake, and in English, he's, he's Mr. T. So, uh, uh, there's another character here who I like, uh, Jesse. So suddenly the lights go out in the train. This is the police checking the ID badges of the passengers. In English, Jesse says, When the lights go out, you never know what kind of creeps will come out. And in Japanese, it's a tiny bit different. And I mean tiny by actually kind of different in sort of a big way. Kurakunaru kara chikan ga oi no yo. Which means, when the lights go out, there are a lot of chikan. Chikan is the Japanese word for chicken. No, wait, sorry, that's uh, chikin. Chikan is the Japanese word for a very specific type of pervert, namely the type of pervert who gropes women in public places, especially on train cars, uh, particularly on crowded train cars. I hate to be the type of guy who would put a Japanese word into the middle of an English sentence and then explain it later, though looks like I just did that. So now, Cloud and Barrett uh, proceed to have a philosophical conversation on the civic architecture of the city of Midgar. Midgar is a city that sits atop a metal plate with slums underneath it. Cloud looks out the train window and says, A floating city. Pretty unsettling scenery. To which Barrett replies, Huh? Never expect to hear that out of someone like you. You just full of surprises. Cloud's English line is quite a literal translation, though. Barrett's is a little bit more nuanced in Japanese. Huh? So he's using the word kanjiru, which means to feel or to sense. We could translate Barrett's line like this with his characterization so far in mind. Hmm, it surprises me to learn that you can feel stuff. Or maybe uh, if we wanted to be a little punchier, uh, wow, you have feelings. That's an actual surprise. Next, Barrett has his famous line. The upper world, a city on a plate. It's cause of that heckin' pizza that people underneath are suffering. Here's a little trivia. Notice that the censored word here in Barrett's sentence is the numbers seven, six, five, four, and three on a keyboard with shift held down uh, in that order. Anyway, I always thought that this line about pizza was, was weird as heck. In 1997, I wondered, there's gotta be some weird untranslatable pun in the Japanese. Well, now in 2017, 20 years later, I noticed that it's not. In Japanese, he actually says pizza. Anokusatta pizza no se de shita no ninge wa donna ni kurushinderu koto ka. And furthermore, he calls it a rotten pizza. By deductive reasoning, we can determine that ampersand up carrot, percentage sign, dollar sign, hashtag is Japanese to English translator ease for rotten. I hope that solves a childhood mystery for someone else. Well, now I just realized that I still considered myself a child when I was 18 years old. Well, I'm sure we'll solve even more mysteries next time. Oh yeah, you heard me. There's gonna be a next time. Thank <laughs> you.